Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Alicia Rain here uh, hosting the uh, the workshop episode 190. Uh, it is Saturday, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So hopefully everyone had a good Thanksgiving and maybe like a low key Black Friday this year. Um, Yep, but I'm Alicia Rain. I'm coming out of South Dakota, and and then Kim, where are you coming out of? Fort Worth, Texas. Okay, she's out of Texas, and then Sandra. Concord, California. Okay, California, and Aaron. New York. New York, and then Manny, where are you coming from? Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia. All right. Yes. All right. We'll we'll have to get our microphone going for for Manny, but we'll get it. Um. So yeah, basically each round, uh, is uh, the first round. Someone is assigned a topic, and then you just have a couple minutes about that specific topic. Uh, we give feedback, and then um, we go around again with our own material. So I'm going to go ahead and just start. Okay, and here we go. I had the topic of agony, um, which um, to me, it's just like, what is hell on earth? That's kind of how I read into it. And so one of those would be to go to a friend's um, improv show. I think that would be just a, <laughs> a little bit of hell on earth there. Um, because like when you go to your friend's band, like it's usually at a bar, uh, you can usually go get a drink, you know, drown out the sound of the Maroon 5 tribute band. Uh, by having a couple of shots of bourbon or, you know, whatever. But at an improv show, you are just stuck there. You can't go anywhere. You are just stuck. And so I think, like, when they call out for suggestions from the audience, I'm just wondering how many times the suggestion back was suicide. I don't know. Um. You know, for me, it was kind of like a hellish situation having to go to church every Sunday. Um, like as a kid, it's always, you're always uncomfortable. And you're sitting on these hard pews. Uh, you know, you're next to some old lady who smells like roses and death. Um, you know, and if you have like a bad preacher, like it makes it even worse. Because he'll have a really low voice like this and you can't even hear what he's saying. So it's just like you you can't even like stare off into space because of this like low droning. <laughs> like it just kind of like goes into your skull and you it's a slow form of torture, especially if you're nine. <laughs> um yeah, guys, I used to ride uh the bus a lot when I lived in Los Angeles. And that basically is just a mobile fart. <laughs> like a bus goes the exact opposite of as the crow flies. Like that's gonna get you right there. Whereas the bus is gonna like do some sort of like square. <laughs> You're like, where are you going? Uh, so you're like stuck on there for a really long time. And one time I saw a guy, he, you know, let somebody go in front of him. And I was just like, it's nice to know that chivalry is still alive on the poverty mobile. Yep. I used to, I used to ride the train as well. And so we would have, Somebody with like a fake baby would go around and try to um, get change from us. And it just was like so awkward to be like, no, 
I see your fake baby. <laughs> like, please leave. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I got. Yep, it was just my other thing was, you know, like why when you get a broken heart is the go-to food ice cream. You know, what if you're lactose intolerant? I don't know, just a, <laughs> a random thing there. So, yep, that was about four minutes for me, guys. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you guys have any feedback. Uh, um, yeah. Are, are, are there really Maroon 5 cover bands? Um, I don't know. <laughs> If there is, doesn't that sound like hell? <laughs> That's pretty hellish. You don't get much more hellish than that. <laughs> I um, liked your line about the mobile fart. The bus is just a mobile fart. I like that. That's super funny. I think you can do a whole bunch of the similes there and do what else is like some other... I don't know. It could either be body functions or something, but it could be something like what other thing is like some, you know, oh, if, okay. if a bus is like a, a mobile fart, then a, a train is like, you know, mobile, whatever, diarrhea, I don't know. Yeah, because it wasn't much better, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the irony of church being hell on earth. I think we could explore that a little more. Mm-hmm. Very good concept. On the improv, I think it, you go out because you want to have a good time. And there's professional improv that, you know, or you've seen on television and it's so good and you're just ready to support your friends and they're going to be so good. And then, <laughs> down, where's the drinks? Where's the, I'm not sure you have to say, it, when you see a friend's band, you get to go to the bar. I would rather have you stay at the improv and act out, where's the bar? I need a drink now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So it tur turns into hell and like act out how I am stuck there. Yes. Be there. Yeah. I think that that it would make a really good act out. And then right. the, the, the tag or topper to that is uh, what you would do the next time your friend asked you to go to the improv show. I can't. I've got to go ride the bus. I got to go. I got to go. Uh, you know, it's the whole typical I got to wash my hair thing, but make it a little bit more hip and modern. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. All right, some good some good feedback there. I like the line about the uh, eating the ice cream. You like the line about what? <laughs> Manny, are you frozen? Uh, eating ice cream. I know if you guys can hear me. <laughs> eating the ice cream because I can picture that. It. It's always like in movie. Women always do that break up. They have different. They always eat ice cream. Watch some ice on movies. Hun, hun, I'm so sorry. We just cannot hear you. I can't hear a word. It's just so. It's so light. I'm gonna try to do it from my other phone. Okay, yeah, try it one more time. Uh, I definitely want to hear your feedback though, so. All right. <laughs> All right, he's gonna, he's gonna join and rejoin, but. Um... All right. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on, and we'll go ahead and go to Kim. 
Um, and uh, the only order I go in is just who's next to me in the in the thing. It's not who gets here first. It's just who's <laughs> who's next to me in the array. So, all right. So yeah. Kim, you are next. And uh, first, what was your subject? My subject word was merchants. Huh. I, I really get some good ones from Scott. <laughs> this is uh, one of the best. So bakery merchants are at a huge disadvantage, right? I mean, how do you arm yourself against a brick or a gun? I mean, strap a French loaf on each hip and commence a debreading? I don't know. If retailers are being held hostage by an invisible perpetrator, the COVID-19, which kind of sounds like a rapper name from the 90s, representing the sick sounds of sickness. Uh, this one goes out to the ladies with the wheezing and sneezing. Get your puffs, Diddy. The big difference in this rapper and those 90s rappers is the kind of blow they're doing, right? <laughs> Merchants are allowed to refuse service to anyone. So with that in mind, Snow White's dwarf Sneezy wouldn't be allowed to shop in their store. Uh, neither would your dumb neighbor's twin girls, Malaria and Chlamydia. <laughs> Meanwhile, merchants are going broke, businesses are going under, and college students are going down. That's because that's the only thing they learn in school nowadays. We live in this world where people play games with other people's livelihoods. They boil, they boycott mercantiles based on political affiliations, which is exactly why I no longer shop at abortion clinics. The government wants to meddle and create bureaucracy. I mean, why don't they just control all the stores? I mean, how about Republican repudiation or independent incense, Democratic dildos, I mean, those are merchants I would barter with. Uh, yeah, give me one uh, one silk wood, one sandal wood, and the morning wood. Uh, many merchants are many merchants are selling their wares online. I, I don't like it because I need to touch stuff before I make that purchase. I at least want a chance to break it before I have to buy it. I mean, you wouldn't buy a pillow. Or a prostitute without putting your head on it. Uh, you have restaurants delivering food from a third-party vendor. I mean, what keeps that pock-faced teenager from touching your fries with his dirty hands or his penis? I mean, every time you eat a fry, you have to be thinking, Oh my God, have I lost my sense of taste? Or did he not jizz on my fries? I mean, I think the best kind of merchant with long-standing customer relationships is uh, the local part pot dealer. I mean, they don't play. If you want weed, you can just send him money on Cash App, go to the mask up meet up at the local park where he will do a roll-by and throw it to you, maintaining social distance and eye contact. I mean, at this point, you don't even care if it is shitty weed. You'll just smoke more of it, so you'll run out fast. So you can go outside again because you miss people. And what better way to socialize than to do a little business with the merchant of Maui Waui? Uh, that's all I have. Okay. <laughs> you have so much good stuff that I couldn't even write it down. It, it sounded like you really had thought about this and written something. I loved your laugh uh, on your refuse to serve anyone. I loved your examples. The only thing I could say is maybe I'd go in, you know, for a longer set, go deeper into refusing service. Uh, but, uh, and, and the one who stuff ahead of time, I, I, I just, I loved it, so I really don't have many suggestions. Oh, thank you so much, Sandra. I appreciate it. Um, I was gonna say, like at the very end, 
you know, you're smoking more, so you're going to go out more. Um, so I'm helping the economy. Um, you know, talk about talk about that. So you know, I'm a good, I'm helping the economy, kind of thing. Um, let's see. And then you had something where it was like girls going down. It was like a high school thing. Um. Yeah. Meanwhile, merchants are going broke, businesses are going under, and college students are going down because it's the only thing they learn in school nowadays. Okay. I'm just wondering if there could be something something that does go up. Ah. You know, so, you know this is going up. College girls are going down. <laughs> oh, that's funny. God, that's funny. Yeah. I love that. All right, Aaron, you got anything to add? Uh, no, it's, it's a good set. All right. Thanks, good job. Yeah, some good, strong stuff there. All right, guys, we are just gonna go ahead and move right along. I'm gonna go ahead and put Aaron in the spotlight. And what was your subject? I thought you were going in the order we came in. Excuse me. All right, you're next, Sandra. Right now, <laughs> she's ready. She's ready, you guys. I, I I did not mean to skip Sandra at all. <laughs> all right. Please, I would be honored to go after you. Okay. Well, my my subject was soul, spelled S O U L, and I wanted to say that because I'm going to stick to that time. Uh, what is a soul? I mean, we hear of things like uh, he sang with soul. He doesn't have any soul. Oh, she's a youngster with an old soul. Well, first off, a soul is a religious thing. Either everybody has a soul or everybody doesn't. If you don't believe in God, does that mean you have no soul? But if God, for people who believe in God, we say that everybody has a soul. So it becomes a very hard thing. And then when you talk about a young child, and sometimes they'll say that she's only a 14-year-old, but she has the soul of an adult. Does that mean that her soul was recycled? Are there not enough souls to go around? So she couldn't get a child's soul? She had to get one from somebody else? Can you be born without a soul? Because there was a shortage, just like there was a shortage of toilet paper. And you have to wait your turn. I get confused of what is a soul. Uh, do animals have souls? Well, animals were made by God, so I believe that animals do have souls. Why would we make a creature without one? And if there is no God, is can there be a soul? I don't know. Because I really don't have the answers. And I really don't have any thoughts in this. And I put a stop there. I told you I didn't need much time. <laughs> All right. Sandra, I uh, you have so many great premises. Like you have so many like bases for like so many great jokes. Um, you know, you're like, does it, do animals have a soul? You know, a lot of them do, but you know, alligators don't, you know, you've seen their dead eyes or, you know, like maybe make a, 
you know, exception for the one that doesn't have a soul. Um, you know, that's kind of fun. Um, you know, and then the soul shortage, like, like the toilet paper, we're, you know, short on that. Um, you know, you could do a couple of other things that we're short on, you know, and then, then also maybe you have a short soul. I don't know what that would look like, but um, I think there's a piece of good stuff there. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I have, I have other things, but um, do you guys have any um, response, Kim or Aaron? No, I mean, I agree. You had a lot of premises, um, a lot of stuff to turn into jokes, and I'd like to hear, uh, you know, more of the jokes. Yeah, I would too. I just didn't have that in the line. <laughs> well, you know what, though? We'll hear them soon. Yeah. yeah. I got uh, that part where you said um, uh, she's a kid, something about she's a kid, but you get she's a, got an old soul, which uh, which is an, like an adult, an adult soul, yeah. whatever, whenever you were talking about that. Um, you could do kind of a compare and contrast there where you can kind of like, well, we gave her a grown up soul, so we had to make her dumb or something, you know, like what did she get in place of getting a, a bigger, better soul or an adult soul. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, she's not real bright, but man, she's got a really good old soul. Or soul <laughs> you know, she eats crayons, but uh, man, that soul of hers. <laughs> yep, she's so. a klepto, but man, she listens real good. <laughs> She's, yeah, 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 yeah. She's got soul, and you should see her dance. Woo, man! <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, and oh, I, and I had kind of the same note about the animal souls. Um, I said, I said, you, you said something about do all do animals have soul? And I said, uh, probably not the howler monkey. Because anything that throws poo can't have a soul. That's <laughs> what I got. Okay. You're a soulless shit slinger. I don't know. Whatever that is. I, you know, however you want to say that. But that's what uh, I yeah. Well, when I get around to writing again, I'll have some. <laughs> and I, I think that is not. <laughs> I didn't do it. No, you got a you got a lot of good bases for um, some great material. You probably uh, once you flesh it out, have like um, six or seven minutes of like uh, well-rounded jokes. So that's a good start. If I get reviewed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're gonna go ahead and move right along to Aaron. Hey. Uh, very cool. Let's hear what you have to say. First, what was your subject? Uh, my subject was modern times. And um, first, I'm going to say that uh, there's going to be a little bit off the cuff because um, while I am in New York and this is where I live for the most part, uh, I fled to Western Massachusetts for the pandemic. Uh, and I'm here just for a weekend back home. And I turned off my Wi-Fi uh, here. So I got no Wi-Fi, so I thought I didn't bring my laptop. I wouldn't bring my laptop. And I thought, damn it, I wrote my stuff on my laptop. Uh, but because it's modern times, I have forgotten how to write longhand. So, <laughs> modern times. Um, it actually makes me think of uh, something that Louis C.K. Uh, talked about. Uh, he, as you know, is our our last uh, our last great moralist comic. So he <laughs> couldn't be a moralist. Um, but what he said was uh, that we are living in a time of miracles, and yet people complain. Uh, and uh, the example he gave was flying. Uh, he said that, you know, you get on an airplane, it's a tube made of steel, you sit down, 
when you get out, you're uh, in a different city or a different country, and that's a miracle, and you shouldn't complain. And to that, I say bullshit. Uh, because, yeah, we're living in a time of miracles. I'm holding this phone and talking to all of you. But, but here's the thing. Uh, my sound quality is pretty shitty, and I'm going to complain about that. Uh, and as far as uh, air travel goes... Um, it's okay to complain about the miracle of air travel now uh, because there are people who remember when air travel was so much better. I mean, maybe it is still a miracle, but you know, it used to be a miracle where you got free food and free booze and free checked luggage. It used to be a much more comfortable mir miracle. It was a miracle with enough space to put your seat back and get some sleep. So you'd actually wake up in another place. Uh, now it's a miracle where you have to give over your shoes and your belt and dump out your shampoo like you're going to some miracle jail. Um, and here's the thing. Uh, it's okay to complain about sucky miracles. Like, if Jesus had turned water into terrible wine, he would have heard about it. Like, Jesus, this wine is terrible. What if, what if Jesus' wine was like the wine, you know, bad wine you bring to a party, nobody opens it. And then the person you brought it to just brings it to the next party, the next party, the next party. And finally, you know, you get it back. Oh, my God, that's Jesus' wine. Uh, I've re-gifted this three times already. Uh, and, uh, that's pretty much what I have on Modern Times. Uh, thanks very much. Oh, very good off the cuff, I've got to say. Uh, I love you forgot how to write logs on Um, uh, because that is probably... One of my is that they're not even teaching cursive anymore. The people only know how to print. So I would go into that probably more. And you're living in the time of miracles. Uh, the one I can think of, we've got COVID now. So it's a miracle we've got this pandemic, which it, we're going to have a vaccine in just a short period of time. Think how long it took to even find out what caused the bubonic plague, let alone get a vaccine in it. It's still not one. And I would just say, yeah, along that. And I love your water. It's a bad one. All wine is bad. <laughs> I liked it. I like the um like regifting Jesus's wine. I thought maybe you could do like boons or box wine. Uh you know like spe a specific bad wine. <laughs> I pretty might make Jim but, uh... <laughs> Oh, I love Manischewitz. Being Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That's good wine. Yeah, <laughs> not that. <laughs> um, and then uh, Miracle Jail, I kind of like that. Um, a miracle Pat Down included. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, and I like, I would like it to be like more like, you know, planes used to be this, but in modern times, planes are now, you know, I, was I mean, that's just a different way to go, you know. I was also thinking, actually, that modern times are, are behind us. We're, uh, we're 60 years out of the modern age. Yeah. We're living in, like, a post-post-modern post, post time. Modern, yeah. We're living in the conspiracy <laughs> age. There you go. Yeah. I like that. Uh, and then um, to go with Sandra, like you know, forgotten how to write longhand. 
um, you know, what else have we forgotten to do that maybe we're taking for granted? You know, like we've forgotten to look up from our phones or we've got forgotten to. We don't um, know how to do math without mm -hmm. a computer. Good call on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, Aaron, you're frozen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> a little bit long time. Hello. Hey, Alicia, you can you freeze? hear us? Did everybody freeze on me? You froze. Can you hear us now? Aaron, can you hear us? Sorry, I lost my signal. All right, can you hear us now? Again, I'm complaining about this miracle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you, can you hear us now? I can, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm Kim, do you have any um signal? All right. There we go. Kim, we got yeah, it. Yeah, I got um <clears throat> you you said uh, my sound quality is pretty shitty. I would just kind of do something there like uh but these photo filters are amazing. I mean, I'm bald, but look at all this hair. Um I, the air travel <sighs> I don't know where I was going with this because I just read it. Air travel gives a whole new meaning to uh, taking a nap, taking a long nap. I don't know where what you said to make me write that down. Uh, and I then bored I just went, you. Huh? I bored you. <laughs> you bored me. <laughs> uh, Chambordeaux, that would be Jesus's wine, I think. Chambordeaux. Uh, if Jesus, if Jesus made horrible wine, like a box wine, and then I said name it, Sham as a scam, Chambordeaux, that'd be funny. Um, it would take two hundred year, two hundred, two hundred years, hundreds of miles on a donkey to get word back. Meanwhile, people are spitting wine all over Bethlehem. Because of modern times, he would know it immediately. Holy Jesus, this is vinegar. Something like that. I don't know. Because of the Yelp reviews or because of bubble, you know, whatever. Got it. Got it. I like I like it if if uh Jesus was a little bit more sham wow. Yeah. You know, it's just like, hey guys, try this one. You know, like a little oh, like funny. snake oil salesman a little mm -hmm. bit. That's so. funny. Yeah, yeah. He, could doing, he could be doing that with anything. Want to see my next miracle? Yeah. Yeah, he's watch, selling miracles. <laughs> Something. And he could be like that Ginsu knife guy. Watch this fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. On the, like fish. The, dude the, the dude at the circus that's trying to sell the uh, the uh, miracle cure. What is it? Uh, the Snake oil salesman. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. she, yeah, she said it. Yeah. Snake mm -hmm. oil. Yeah, medicine, uh, medicine wagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I but think I that like, would I do like uh, Ron Pope Peel is Jesus. That's uh, <laughs> something I would like to maybe pursue. Yeah. Yeah, or like those like exercise, super exercise gurus who are like too pumped, and you're like, mm -hmm. you know, calm down. <laughs> All right. This is how I prepare to walk on water. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very cool. All right. I'm going to reset my clock here. Okay. So now it's time for our original material. And I'll go first just to kind of um, break the ice. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, guys, I really, you know, want us to get pumped up. You know, I want us to get the type of pumped up where you buy a lottery ticket, win a dollar, and then turn around and buy another lottery ticket. I want to get gamblers high pumped up. And how do I do that? Through elevator music. Yeah. 
Can you feel it? Because I can. Guys, but you know what? Maybe that's good. not good enough. I want to get the type of pumped up where you've had five cups of coffee and you are shaking unintentionally. How are we going to do that? Through NPR Radio. Next up on NPR Radio is some smooth jazz, followed by another eight hours of smooth jazz. Woo! I am pumped. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of my friends, uh, she, somebody um, said to me after I said that joke, she was like, you know, I'm really offended. Like, they've been like a really good, you know, outlet for me to listen to. And they're very calming. And I'm like, I get it. They, you know, do their job. You know, but they, what they don't tell you is that those driver's ed videos, uh, Blood on the Highway, that the guy was actually listening to NPR radio right before that accident happened. So uh, what I'm saying is boredom kills. And I don't, uh, you know, I don't have anything against it, but at the same time, it's just, I want us to like shake it up a little bit, you know, like especially for the Democrats. You know, I mean, you go to CNBC, you are falling asleep. You go to Fox News, like they don't know how to whisper. <laughs> they are in your face. And I just think the Democrats could take a little uh, hint from that. Like the only time I've actually purposefully tuned in to uh, MSNBC or whatever it's called is when Rachel Maddow said that she had the tax returns. I tuned in and it's just her flopping papers around. And I'm just like, Rachel Maddow, you know, your lip gloss game you've won, but this is super boring. <laughs> what I'm saying to Democrats is, can you just get out a t-shirt cannon every once in a while? I don't think that would be too much to ask. Just some confetti. Just Rip Taylor <laughs> throwing confetti in your face. Um, so, um, yeah, guys, I actually wrote a poem recently, and um, I'm actually very excited about it because the last time I wrote a poem was in high school. Uh, and in high school, I was a radically different person. I wore so much black eyeliner that I got the nickname raccoon. It had nothing to do with the fact that I also had rabies. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, with all that makeup, I'm sure you can imagine like how my poetry <laughs> was so different. You know, everything was shattered and broken and, uh, you know, I just had a bunch of synonyms for the word black, like obsidian and midnight. And so my poem now is a little different. So I'm going to uh, read you my poem. Here's my poem. So eggs, bread. You know what? This is just my grocery list. Um but spice does rhyme with rice, so um, poetry in motion. You're welcome, America. All right, that's what I got. <laughs> uh, yeah. So is there any, any feedback? I have some feedback about your poem. Keep going before you give it up that it's your grocery list and make it more like haiku, dramatic. Make it like okay. act out. Bread. <laughs> Milk. Eggs. You know, whatever. Whatever that feels like to you. Okay. Okay. I have a, it's general and then I'll get specific. You have a very Soft, calm delivery. 
And therefore, when you are talking about, I want to get pumped by the <laughs> elevator music, the uh, NPR, and then you'd say, I, I want you to say, I want something that really gets to you, not calm like I am. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that, you, you know, you really get it in there. Either that or you have to change your delivery, which I would never ask anyone to do that. But somehow, when you're talking about getting pumped, but you yourself aren't, then you've got to make mention of it. Address uh, it. Okay, yeah. Then oh. you can go into the what's really pumped, and you did a little bit uh, talking about things that were up. Don't forget gossip. You mentioned going to church, and that's not up. But gospel music and a good hellfire and brimstone church. So you've got another comparison that you can do in there. Uh, and I love the Democrats boring. And when you talk about the Republicans, that that's what brought that comment before. When you talk about the Republicans, because they are the evangelical. Mm -hmm. so, again, you get into that. And I loved your ra raccoon and don't have rabies. <laughs> yeah. funny. Or do have, I should say. Fabulous. One more comment about the poem. You said that uh, you were goth and, and everything was black and you had all these words for black. Uh, maybe you throw that in between your grocery list. You know, bread, white, rice, white, you know. Stuff oh, okay. And synonyms for that as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I want you to lean more into pump in the beginning. That I should wet? No so pumped. Uh, I want you to lean more into pump, not just so pumped about lottery, but pumped about everything. Okay. Woo! Pumped about soft boiling an egg, pumped about hard boiling an egg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like watching an egg boil, that's what gets me pumped. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Pumped about paint, pumped about mustard. Yeah. Pumped about floors, <laughs> pumped about ceilings. <laughs> nothing, nothing gets me pumped up like paint drying. Yeah. 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 Or I, I had another example was like nature sounds. Okay. So. Yeah, and as uh, Sandra said, more uh, more excited to throw it to to uh, work against the calmness of the things that pump you up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I don't have self awareness of how calm I am because I was like, yeah, I'm being pumped up, and I wasn't. <laughs> so. So it's good to know that. I just thought it came or, across real deadpan. It was fun. Do you record yourself? Um, sometimes. Oh, sometimes oh. I do. Yeah. If, if just get one of these little tape recorders and always tape it and listen to it, and you'll become more aware of how you sound. And if that's the way you want to sound, then it, you know, make your comedy fit you. And it, yeah. as I said, you can talk about being pumped, being calm, if you then compare it to what, well, I, of course, I don't want them to get as wild as I am. And, and then you've got to get out of it. <laughs> All right. I like it. All right. Well, thanks you guys for some great feedback. Any other feedback? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Uh, um, no, really. Good. All right. Thanks, Aaron. All right. So, Kim, I think you were next. 
And then it's Sandra. Okay. You may be all that's left. <laughs> well, and then Aaron's last. <laughs> if he comes back. I think his camera's just off. I think he's still there, though. I'm still here. Oh, good. I, still there, yeah. You sound better without the camera. <laughs> well, I'm curious. Your voice comes through stronger. Yeah, that's some, sometimes with like StreamYard and, um, you know, Zoom, like the camera off does work better. So, all right, Kim, are you ready? I am ready. Okay. All right. Um, some of you may be saying, um, woo-wee, she looks like somebody that's fun to party with. And some of you may be more like, no, uh-uh. Looks like she's going to cold. But look, I had to start doing something with this hair since the redneck stole the mullet from the lesbians. And this hairstyle, this hairstyle actually has a name. My hairstylist calls it, oops. I grew up poor. And it's hard because everything we got was generic. I mean, we didn't get SpaghettiOs. We got pasta rounds. We got the stuff that came in a white package with big, bold, black letters. I mean, not Coca-Cola, just cola. Not Lay's potato chips, just chips. I mean, imagine having your friends over for a party, and all there is to sneak from your parents is beer and porn. Uh, nothing worse than generic porn. All missionary. Getting older sucks. Uh, my menopause doesn't know if it wants to have a hot flash, have a feud with one of my annoying neighbors, or just have a cry in another donut. I'm, I'm really scared of what it may want tomorrow. Will it be moping around in my PJs or coffee sprinkled with cocaine? Again, yeah. <laughs> So I've started getting these random cramps in my hands. They kind of look like I'm making gang signs. I mean, I have to be careful in public places. I could get a cramp and accidentally start a twerk war. Like, I want to order the number three at Burger King. But what if I get a cramp? I mean, people get nervous. They're probably thinking, she looks middle-aged. Do the bloods have a senior division? <laughs> I mean, because look, I'm more like a blood clot, right? You know, why do women have to struggle so much with their weight? I mean, I fight the limits of my genes. Not enough exercise slows your metabolism. And, and menopause slows, slows your metabolism. Breathing. I think breathing has slowed my metabolism. You ever tried not to breathe? I can imagine that commercial. Breathe half as much. Lose weight twice as fast. Yeah, being invited to a friend's house, I never know what to wear. Sweatpants, swimsuit, my tool belt. Because it nearly always turns into me making some household repair. Install a ceiling fan, fix a running toilet, smoke a brisket. Okay, okay, I get it, I'm a lesbian. But I'm not there to collect lesbian merit badges. I'm not the stereotypical Birkenstock wearing, car repairing, Indigo girl listening, softball playing, man hating, straight woman converting, U-Haul towing, cat collecting gay. I'm just an everyday normal person. I think some people say, some straight people say, she seems so normal for a gay. I'm just the kind of normal person that watches Snapped in investigative TV about serial killers and studies all the angles on how to commit the perfect murder. You know, the kind of normal person that just goes to work every day and complains about not getting promoted to CEO despite my lack of education and experience. You know, just the real normal stuff. The type of normal person that no song has ever been written about. I mean, there's not a song out there that goes... Whoa, 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 she's a lady. Whoa, 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 but she's manly. Talking about my lady. I am normal and gay. 
and go to corporate events, talk about dildos, and get public officials to resign. Just real normal stuff. Normal gay. Have you ever, do you remember the West, Westboro Baptist Church? Anybody remember that? They're the uh, GodHatesFags.com people from Topeka, Kansas. They would show yeah. up to military funerals and blame the gays for everything. You know, 9-11 must have been the gays. Soldiers killed in war. Yep, the gays. Or other natural disasters must have been the gays. Floods in the Midwest because of the gays. Coronavirus, the gays. Listen, I know a lot of gays. They're more like the wine flu. Now, that's gay. Now, if you want to blame the gays for anything, you can blame them for all those disasters in fashion. I mean, the gays came up with the peplum, the pinnow loafers, and the bell bottoms, which actually got their name from Twinkie Alter Boys. I don't know if you knew that. Oops. Uh, I mean, who... Whoa, hold on. I lost my place. Sorry. Who do you think made answering the door wearing a blindfold, ball gag, and saran wrap? The gays. Uh, that's got to be a scary runway show for the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> holy fuck. By the way, how many Hail Marys are equal to one holy fuck? <laughs> it's crazy that gays can make a fashion gown out of anything. Satin, sequin, cellophane. Notice I didn't include the dykes in that. All we can make her is lawn art and birdhouses. A drag queen friend of mine, Amber, made an entire floor-length dress out of empty Pall Mall cigarette packs. Not the box, the packs, because they're more flexible. I mean, I don't know if I'm more impressed by her sewing skills or her persistence in smoking 200 packs of Pall Mall Light 100s. I'm like, girl, this dress is amazing. You are so talented. And she was so humble, you guys. She looked me right in the eyes and said, Oh, thank you. It was nothing. <laughs> All that's right. My, that's, that's my jokes. All right. Very good. Awesome. <laughs> Smoke a brisket. <laughs> No, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> All right. Um, I think one thing is you had the oops, and I think like you could kind of compare that to like girls giving themselves bangs. <laughs> you know, like, oh, they got COVID bangs where I, I got COVID oops oh, or that's something. Bang. That's that's super funny. Bangs. That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sandra, you got anything? Well, I've got to say that I love your style of writing. And it is so far from my way of thinking that it's hard for me to say anything. The only thing I came up with it was really on the smoke of brisket. I want to know what you do smoke. Uh, or, you know, somewhere along those lines. Uh -huh. You had so many good jokes. You know how to just talk and have punchlines every other word practically and how to exaggerate. And as I think that's just very far from anything I could really get very much on. I love it and I applaud you on it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Sam. All right, Aaron, did you have any uh, response? First great stuff. Uh, second in the uh, in the list of things that the gays are blamed for, I'd love for you to let slide that maybe one of them was the gays. <laughs> like, uh, you know. Yeah, it's funny. Hurricanes, they blame the gays. Uh... Tornadoes, they blame the gays. 9 11, okay. Hey, that was the gays. But. <laughs> okay, I got you. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you were yeah, saying. It was, it was, it was. I thought you were saying the gays blame the gays. <laughs> that's, that's how I thought it was. <laughs> I, who um, knows? I, I lost my place somewhere around there, so I was. It may have came out that way. 
I um the true crime stuff. I feel like there's some it's um just for me it's it's more a similar thing. Like I'm just like everybody else. And that is like everybody else watching true crime and like, you know, trying to prevent yourself from, you know, they watch it for you know, that's what they that's what like some straight girls they'll, they'll say like I I watch it to prevent you know, as like a guide to prevent myself from getting killed or whatever. And you're like, I'm looking at, at it and taking notes on what to do. Okay. So, um, yep. And then swine flu, wine flu. I feel oh. like there's some other rhymey things that you could have. Okay. Um, yep. And then... Uh, I like the last joke, uh, the fashion. I feel like the just the fashion stuff in general could be um, cleaned up a little bit, just some like kind of uh, maybe even put together as like one bit. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, but good stuff for sure. Thank you, guys. All right. All right, if nothing else, I'm gonna go ahead and go to Sandra. Okay. <laughs> oh, you young people, I know you grow up with everybody saying, use protection, you have to use protection. Well, in my day, we did a lot of risky things and we didn't use protection. And I have to admit that I had a lot of unprotected listening and now I've got hearing aid. Oops. I was told when I was in my 40s that I was a candidate for hearing aid, but I didn't want to get them because I was afraid that they would make me look old. That's ridiculous. If hearing aids can make a person look old, maybe I could look young now. If I wore a diaper. <laughs> but hearing aids aren't all they're cracked up to be. People expect you to really be able to hear things. And I can. I can hear everything now. I still can't understand it, but I can hear it. In fact, after I got hearing aids, I found out that. Husbands have opinions. <laughs> now, but I still can't really hear what people are saying often. I mean, the police stopped me the other day. And he, well, look, do you know how fast you were going? Why do you care if my slip is showing? You were speeding. I'm too old to be breathing. Look, I'm going to give you a ticket, lady. Are you out of your mind? I won't look it. Are you deaf? Oh, quit yelling. I can hear you, and no, I don't have a check. But sometimes, just for the fun of it, I like to pretend that I can't understand especially in the fast food, like at McDonald's, in the drive-up window, and then I'll order a hamburger, and then they go, uh, you want fries with that? No, I don't think there are any flies. I said, do you want fries? Well, I do hope nobody dies. Lady, do you want fries or not? Oh, quit yelling. I know it's hot. Go up to the next window and pay. Oh, you have a good day. And don't forget, I want fries. So, maybe not hearing this is all bad. And sometimes it can be fun. On a different subject. I had a young man after a show come up and tell me that I look hot and maybe I'd like him to come home with me. But I was thinking, Sandy, 
still got it. And Carol, he said he'd only charge me $25. He was offering me a senior discount. Well, that's a person that an investment advisor. You should never ask, offer a discount when the customer is willing to pay full price. <laughs> I don't worry about there being a recession or anything because in time I know that the markets always go up. What I worry about is that when they do go up, I might not still be greedy. Young people don't know that banks used to give you a toaster if you would open an account with them. Now, they want the toaster as collateral. In fact, banks in their vaults, many of them have no money, just toasters. Investment advisors, if they do invest for the long run. Well, for me, a long run is getting to the bathroom. And that's more of a slow hobble. Willie Sutton, he said that he robbed banks because that's where the truth is on. That's my step. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's some funny stuff there. Um, when you find out that your husband have has an opinion, you take your hearing aids out. I think that would be oh. a new addition. Uh -huh. Yep. And I think you could do like the rule of three, like, you know, something that would make me look younger would be like the diaper and then something else and something else um, could work there. I think diapers last. Yeah. I'm sorry, I did not get that one, Jim. Kim, what did you say? I didn't get it. The rule of three, but diapers the punch. Diapers oh, laugh. Yeah, yeah, the that's list. true. I never thought of two picks. I'll try to. All right. Um, what about you, Aaron? Do you have any response? Uh, to tell you the truth, I, I didn't catch a lot of it. My phone has been going in and out, as you can see. Yeah, I had trouble with that. Um, I, did, I did catch the hearing aid line. I liked it, and I liked the comment. All right. Uh, well, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> sorry about that. So, no. I can't hear you, so we're going to be... <laughs> Don't worry about we're, we're just fine. <laughs> All right. Um, I, yeah, I like when you mess with people. Uh, I think that's funny, messing with the cop, messing with the um, the lady. I think you could flip it around where you mess with the um, McDonald's person first and then the cop. Okay. And, and when you flip that around, then you can end leaving the cop with, and I want fries with that or something. Oh. That may be the punch. You know, he gives you a ticket. Don't yeah. I get fries with that or something? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, th I think that's about all I have. Um. Oh, that's all good stuff. Yeah. All right. Great stuff. So, Aaron, are you in a good place to, to do your set? Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. And I'm in as good a place as any. Okay. <laughs> well, why don't you turn okay. off the picture because we can hear you better. Excuse me? If you turn off your picture, we could hear you better. It doesn't seem to cut in the noise. Oh, I'll try that. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, awesome. Well, you shouldn't have been looking at my ugly mug then. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's get started then. This is just going to be uh, a collection of uh, random stuff I've been working on, and I'll start with this. Um, guys, uh, my, my wife hates noise. Well, that's not entirely fair. I, I guess what she really hates is um, sound. Uh, ironically, she has super hearing. Um, so I'm constantly knocking on the neighbor's doors to complain about sounds that I can't hear. It's like, uh, excuse me, could, could you keep it down? Keep what down? Uh, I don't know. It's like this mythical quest uh, to figure out what annoys her. Uh, and um, what's worse, all of that Republican dog whistling, well, she can hear that. And it's made her very racist. Uh, here's something else. Um, I uh, I was invited to a uh, to a wedding in a red state, and I have no idea what color camo I'm supposed to wear. <laughs> All I know is I'm not supposed to wear white if I've already shot a person. Um, I, I recently uh, I recently went to a uh, to a, a Zoom bar mitzvah. And the theme was quarterly sales goals, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, strange for bar mitzvah, but makes sense for Zoom. Uh, this, uh, what I'm going to do, what I'm about to do is um, the Statue of Liberty as a mugger. Ready? Give me your tired, your hungry. Your huddled mess is yearning to be free, and that watch, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see. What else do I got here? Um, here's an idea. We don't know much about the brain, but one thing we do know is that it sucks. Uh, that was just an idea. Uh, here's something else. A lot of people are afraid of ghosts. But ghosts are afraid of commitment. Um, and I'm going to say that that's what I got. Oh, here's here's one. A couple more. Uh, so um, I've come up with a way to avoid the war on Christmas. Shit your pants in front of the draft board. <laughs> uh Actually, I love Christmas. I, I believed in Santa as a kid. I still do. You might say, but Aaron, you look so Jewish. To which I'd answer, well, that's very bigoted of you. But but yes, I, I am. And, and here's the thing. It's actually easier for Jews to believe in Santa because he's not coming to our house. <laughs> uh, guys, that's what I got for now. Uh, thanks so much. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can you put your video back on? I find that <laughs> easier to talk to somebody. <laughs> I'm back. All right. There he is. But please speak up because, uh, yeah, when the, you're right. When the video's on, it's uh, very spotty. Oh, okay. Well, if you need to turn it off so you can hear us. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You do. <laughs> I, I want you to see my tears as you can. <laughs> uh, so go ahead. I like the one-liners. Um, there's some good ones in there. Um, the dog whistle one. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there um, there's some good stuff there, but I feel like it could just use a little bit of work. Sure. Um, I don't have a, quite a suggestion for that, but. Um, the camo um, joke was hilarious. Um, I live in a red state, so that 100% makes sense. Same. Um, 
Yeah, any, Kim, you got any notes? The, whenever you're investigating the noise that your wife hates, it's the imaginary noise before you lead up to the dog whistle. Mm -hmm. And you could, it, could, it could be part of that thing. Um, my wife hates no, noise, or should I say sound. So whenever she hears something she doesn't like, I go out and investigate. Turns out it's the sound of my voice or something. That maybe she hears a dog, Republican dog whistle. Da, 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 turns out it's the sound of my voice. That's what she hates. Something, something like that. I love the Statue of Liberty. That one, I heard the whole thing. A lot of them, and this is not making it up. <laughs> A lot of them, I heard your premise, but I could not understand the punchline. Uh, yeah, see, so you're doing the same thing. Yeah. I yeah, I couldn't. I don't know if you talk louder on the premise, but I didn't get the punchline, so I can't. Wait, where? I'm going to turn off my camera because I cannot hear you. Uh, I said okay. that. Well, I really have nothing to say except I like the Statue of Liberty. I heard the whole joke. But others, I heard the punchline. Uh, oh, great. Setup, but I couldn't understand the punchline. There, there, there are certain sounds that I can't hear. And I'm sorry. Right. You know, I'm, a, I'm in an old phone uh, without Wi-Fi. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, I was trying to help you out about the one with the brain and it sucks, but I can't. I can't get there. I think you need to flip okay. it around or something. Very, you know, it sucks uh, the brain or something. You know, you need to flip it somehow because nobody oh, expects oh. to say that. You know. Mm -hmm. I'll tell oh, you what oh. sucks. The brain. It, it's more. Than, it's oh. it. Something. Yeah, well, you only use 10% of your brain, and so maybe that's why it sucks. Like when you use 10% of anything. Uh -huh. Oh, there you sucks. go. There you go. What else Ten do you use 10% of? I, yeah. I use 100% of my brain to waste time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and maybe that's, that's uh, maybe that's the end is like, but I use 100% of my brain. Wow. That's yeah, I, I liked your one liners. There's a lot of really good one liners in there. So. Thank you. All right. Any other responses? Hey. Any other? Um. Yeah. Yes, Aaron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My phone is about to die, so I've made it to the end. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off. Sure, you made it, good Aaron. Job, thank you so much. I'm hoping we got some good feedback for you. All right, guys. Well, Aaron, yes, he's signing off. Well, All right, Aaron, signing off. And um, that is also the end of our episode. Um, so definitely, you know, check us out on the, the workshop. Do you guys have anything you want to promote? Sandra, should we follow you on Instagram? Or what else do you want to let people know about? I have uh, YouTube is S.M. Risser, R-I-S-S-E-R, my last name or uh, Sandra Risser on Facebook, uh, like my page. I've got two of them, Sandra Risser and Miss Your Ex Reload and Fire Again. <laughs> I, think, I think I grabbed both of you. All right. Well, I like, I like that second name a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so does my ex. <laughs> All right. And Kim, do you have any uh, Instagram, a uh, podcast, anything you want to um, talk about? Uh, you can find me on KimWadsworthComedy.com and all of my links up at the 
are there, my schedules, my uh, all my memes. I, I do a meme a day uh, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and uh, all my links are on there. So that's the easiest way. Okay. And Very I put that cool. in the chat, but I don't know if you can see it. Yep, we are going to have all that same information um, when we um, put it up officially. Right now we're just streaming live, but when we put it up officially, we'll have all of our contact information at Alicia Rain on Instagram, uh, at Alicia Rain 2 on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Facebook too. So, yep, that is our episode. Uh, I'm going to say goodnight on a Saturday. Good night, everybody. <laughs> say goodnight. Good night. <laughs>